What's your story? What does accessibility mean to you? How can technology contribute to greater inclusivity? Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. In collaboration with Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind's digital series, Where Are We Now? Featuring Jason Birnbaum, the Chief Information Officer at United Airlines. Hello and welcome to the Where Are We Now? and Spotlight Sessions collaboration podcast. Together with the Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind and Accessibility, we're working side by side to foster a better understanding and empathy between the blind and business communities. We will be highlighting the challenges, triumphs, and daily realities faced by people who are blind or visually impaired and those living with disabilities. And we will be exploring the latest trends, technologies, and policies that are shaping a more inclusive digital world and accessible future for all. My name is Josh Basil. I'm your co-host for today's show. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the community relations manager at Accessby and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. I'm Jocelyn Hunter, your other co-host for today's show. I am Senior Director of Communications at Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind. CLB is a nonprofit serving the Washington DC region through programs and services for people of all ages who are blind or visually impaired. Today, we'll be talking with Jason Birnbaum, a seasoned technology executive with a wealth of experience in the aviation industry. Since 2022, he has served as the Chief Information Officer at United Airlines. His work supports 180 million annual customers, 90,000 employees, and a global operation responsible for all customer-facing technology. His leadership oversees United Airlines award-winning mobile app and a 24-7 technical team of over 35,000. 3,500 people with a $2 billion budget. Welcome, Jason. Hi, it's uh, a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to, to speak with you guys today. Yes, Thanks. welcome, Jason. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to our conversation. So let's get started. Absolutely. What inspired you to an information technology career and how has your IT career evolved? Well, I think it all goes back to uh, one holiday in a Commodore 64 uh, that when I, it was my first computer I got, uh, and I think my mom, who was a single mom at the time, uh, saved, saved a little more money than we had and, and she bought it for me. And at that point I was hooked on technology uh, and I, I spent, you know, my childhood in and around computers. And when I had the opportunity to get started, uh, I was able to, to my, my first job was at General Electric and they let me do technology. And I've been in it ever since. Uh, I've always loved, the thing I love about it is, is that it really can drive change. And technology is the vehicle to help people do, do better, do things better, achieve more results. And so for me, the passion is, is not only the technology, but seeing it in action and seeing people use it in a way that um, really drives value for our customers, for employees, for, for everyone. So it's, it's been a, it certainly has been a, a career that I've been blessed to do something that I love and, and have a lot of passion for. And well, with, with technology and everything else that we're seeing today, kind of artificial intelligence is reshaping the world as we know it, and especially the business world. How is United Airlines kind of leveraging AI and technology to reshape air travel? Yeah, well, um, it has been exciting time for AI. And certainly in the last little bit over a year, the, the sort of generative AI hit the market and, hit, and, and became sort of aware uh, for everybody. And so that's certainly turbocharged what's going on. But we, we've been using AI at the airline for for many years, um, you know, we've been using it in our contact centers and using it in our operation. But, but really, with generative AI, which is um, this amazing new way of thinking about AI, where it can actually respond in to to questions in a very broad sense, has really opened the door. I think our industry is very has a lot of opportunities for AI, and it's it's sort of a really good fit. One of the things we we've started doing uh, that I'm really excited about is something, well, 
we have a program for many times called Every Flight Has a Story. And the idea is that if we can speak to our customers in English with empathy in a timely manner, um, if things aren't going well or they need updates, that, that even though it may be a tough situation, that they're going to feel better about it because they, they're getting straight, the straight story, clean, good information, and they can trust it to make decisions. So we asked ourselves, hey, you know, we, right now we have human beings writing that. And the question was, can AI, can generative AI write those stories? And interestingly enough, the answer is yes. So we took a bunch of operational data, fed it into the AI and said, hey, given what's happening in this situation, can you write a message for our customers that's empathetic, that is apologetic when need be, that, that focuses, that, you know, that, that really captures the situation? And it did a great job. And so for us, that's really exciting because what it unlocks is uh, right now we're limited to the amount, you know, we, can, we only have so many storytellers, so we can only do it so many times. But now we have the opportunity to really imagine a world where people can get very personalized information about their situation, whatever they need, when they need it. So this is just the start of us sort of unlocking what is a complicated and can be daunting journey um, with a tool that might be able to provide them the information they need when they need it in the manner they need it um, and really help them on their way. And so I think it does, it also, um, and when you think about traveling, especially if, you know, if you have a disability, there's so much more you have to think about on the journey. And so I think this also sort of opens the door for us to think about how we can provide even more custom solutions, more information, um, which I think is gonna really um, benefit all travelers, and I, and I do think especially uh, folks with, with, with challenges as well. So that's, that's awesome. And I love that because as a leader, you're kind of, you're, you're getting those stories, you're learning about your customers and their experiences and everything else. So like, is, is there, you know, do you do the same thing kind of with your employees with disabilities? Or is there anything else you can share that you feel is valuable for really even taking to the next level of learning travelers with disabilities? Yeah, look, I, I would say that the, the, the secret to, to delivering technology starts and ends with listening to the users, listening to your customers, listening to your employees. And I always tell my team, like, if you want to, if you want to have a project that's not going to work, don't listen to anybody. And, and if you want it to work, make sure you, you know, I mean, it's, it's binary, like either it will work because you listen to them or it will, it will not work because you don't. And so um, we're actually uh, blessed internally with a couple different uh, different avenues to get some of that feedback. First, we have what we call a, a BRG, a business resource group called Bridge. It's called Bridge. Uh, that's really focused on um, employees uh, with disabilities. Um, and so it's a group of employees that come together uh, on, on their own and you volunteer to be part of this organization. Uh, but they really work on tackling issues um, providing feedback, building awareness uh, around what it what it means to be both in the workplace today um, and, and and have disabilities, but also what it means to be an airline customer. And so they're an amazing resource because these are folks who either have disabilities or have family members that have disabilities who are who live it every day or who have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. And and so they're a great resource for us. And we bring them into all of our focus groups. We bring them into um, anytime we're talking about new products. Uh, new process changes. They have a wealth of information and, and, and perspective, uh, which is one. Two, you know, I have on our team, there's a gentleman who's blind, um, really one of my, our, our developers, and he is a vocal advocate and always points out and helps helps us see where, um, where we can be better. So for instance, we, we went to an open office plan um, and he was the first to point out, hey, if you're gonna have an open office plan, you need Braille on the signs because I got to find the desk and I need to know how to get there. Um, and so we put we put Braille out throughout the office. He's also the, one of the advocates for Braille on the airplane, which we now have. Uh, so when you want to find your seat, you can use use that as well. Um, and then and because he's in technology with us, um, he really is on the front line of making sure that all of our mobile tools, all of our technology um, is um, accessible, that we're using, you know, it has the right, you know, voice cap capabilities and other other communicative uh, you know, capabilities, because he, 
he's both one of our developers, but he's a traveler and he uses it every single day. And so the, so those are just a couple examples. I, I could probably spend the, the next 20 minutes talking about other ways to do it. And frankly, um, the, the last thing I'll mention, Josh, is, 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 our, is our relationship. And, you know, in the last, I'd say, year or so, uh, as I've gotten to know you and um, you, you've been a tremendous resource for us and, and, and providing us feedback. Um, and I'm, you know, continue to be excited about that relationship as well. So. Thank you, Jason. And I, I, I definitely agree. There's, there's beautiful things that happen when you bring the right people together and learn and then do something about it. And that's, that's how we change the world together. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, if you don't mind, I, I, if I, I may, you know, one of the things that we did, which Josh participated with, if you don't mind me me sharing a little anecdote, was, um, you know, I, I got involved uh, with Josh through a, a mutual friend of ours at New Motion, um, who said, you got to meet this guy, Josh, um, you're gonna love him. And he was right. Um, but we started talking and, and what we realized in the spirit of, of actually understanding what's happening is we're like, I, we need a better perspective of what the air airport journey is um, from folks who, who are, who are in, in wheelchairs, uh, especially with their, their, their own mo mobile wheelchairs. And so we all decided, let's go out to, we to Washington Dulles mm -hmm. and let's spend a day. And we brought, um, Josh brought some folks, uh, th you know, of, of various, uh, you know, various types of, of, um, of wheelchairs. And we brought our folks from the ramp we brought our folks from customer service. We brought our technology people. We brought our operations people, and we just walked through the process. And we just we just listened. Um, and as 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 the as they talked about the challenges, their concerns, their fears, you know, and it opened our eyes certainly to all kinds of new possibilities. And frankly, it's taken us in a whole new direction in terms of some of the technology uh, that we are we are launching. But I think that was a really important moment for everybody. Uh, and we, and we internally, uh, you know, Josh talk about that moment all the time, um, because we anchor back to that as a, as a time when, you know, we really, you know, had a moment to see and, and, and understand how impactful, even things we didn't under think about are in terms of, of the journey. Thank you for doing that. It, it takes leadership to bring together kind of all the right pieces of the puzzle, the right team members, the community and uh, to see it from those different perspectives and experiences, especially that lived experience. So thank you, Jason, for your leadership. Yeah, no, thank you for your support. We're, you're uh, helping us be better. Jason, thank you for sharing that story and the other strong, significant examples of leaning in and collaborating with subject matter experts and customers and users of the different technologies. You mentioned your team member who is blind and his value provided to the team, to the industry. And to that end, I'm curious, since you've joined United Airlines in 2022, can you share some tangible changes that have benefited the users with vision loss. Um, so people who are low vision or completely blind. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, from a vision perspective, I mean, as I mentioned, we are the, the first airline to add Braille to the aircraft interiors. Yeah. Um, so as you wanna find your seat, um, you can easily do that. Um, and then, you know, from my space, from, uh, from a, um, a technology perspective, you know, we work very hard on our mobile app, increase color, make, you know, make the graphics and rendering better. Uh, and then we've integrated technologies like voiceover and talk back to, to make sure that if you're, you know, if you can't see the screens at all, that you can still use it uh, with, with the audio. So we're, we're trying um, to make sure that we have, and, and, and then all of our kiosks, you, you will see, we're rolling out kiosks that have um, the, the audio jacks. So if you need to plug in, um, certainly, you know, there's a lot of standards and compliance. We make sure that they're, um, the kiosks are, are, are similarly able to handle audio as well as, as visual. And, and frankly, there's, there's, there's also height requirements too. So if you're in a, in a wheelchair, you can't, 
um, reach, we also make sure that those that all the all the buttons are accessible to a certain height. So there's a lot of thought that goes into how we think about making the experience um, in travel, which is hard. And I'm going to say it, it's hard for it's for everybody. And so and there's an infinite number of challenges and a lot of moving pieces. And but we do we try to find all those places and make sure that um, that we do what we, 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 we possibly can to make sure that it's um, that it's as easy and as seamless as possible. And Jason, thank you so much. And, and I will say um, from the perspective of someone who is visually impaired, who has low vision and not a braille reader, and um, most people who are blind or visually impaired do not read braille, it is also important to um, recognize the significance of the interpersonal support from team members, good Samaritans who might be willing and able to help guide a traveler to the right seat on the aircraft. Um, so thank you and your team. You know, the other thing, I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that um, because one of the other things we do and it's second nature to us, so I'm glad you mentioned it, is, you know, if you let us know, and I think we have ways to do it, if you, you know, if you have a hearing impairment or a visual impairment or, or in a, you know, we have tools and capabilities to make sure that that flight attendant, the flight attendant will know. And we we have digital tools um, available. So when they look at the flight, they can see very quickly, you know, if, if there are any, if you've let us know, mm -hmm. we will, that information will get to the flight attendant and they will be there uh, and, and simply to, to be of assistance if necessary too. And so, you know, we make, you know, we, we, cause that's, that's half of it, right. Is making sure that everyone is aware of right. what may be needed yeah. in those situations yeah. so that, that they can offer a little extra support if needed. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you. And Jason with Jason, I know as a, being in your position, there's like a million things that go behind oh. the scenes to make a, someone get from start to finish to where their destination is and back home safely. And, um, but it's, it's, now, as the as the user, that's the, as the traveler, you kind of got to start uh, at at the website or at the booking process. Can you talk about some of the, like the recent changes in yeah. twenty twenty four that were made to the United Airlines website and booking process, specifically Absolutely. for wheelchair users? Absolutely, no, and and uh, we, um, you know, it's it's not trivial, as, as as certainly you know, Josh, to when you think about a very custom wheelchair and, and getting it through a process of getting it on a plane and off a plane. Um, what you realize, if you've ever seen it up close, is that the, sometimes the planes, the doors to the planes are pretty small to load the cargo and everything else. And so one thing we did right away, uh, which we've, we've rolled out, is we've allowed um, a, a sizer, if you will, so that if you have a wheelchair and you're flying on a flight that you'll be able to say, Hey, I have, I have a wheelchair of these dimensions. Will it even actually fit on that through that cargo door? Will we be able to get it on? Which I think is, is been, you know, cause we heard directly from, uh, you know, Josh, from your, from your group and others that, that it's, it's frustrating to get all the way to the airport to only find out that the wheelchair won't fit on the plane. And, and then, you know, and then of course that you have to get rebooked or potentially miss, you know, have the trip. So, so this is step one in our vision is just to make sure that, that we can, that if you book a flight, you can be confident that your wheelchair will be able to go on that plane, but we're not going to stop there. And, you know, we've been, you know, in, in conversation, uh, in listening mode to understand what is all the other information we need around these situations. And so, you know, our vision is that not only are 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 you able to feel confident in being able to book on a flight that it that fixes it, but that you know there's so much information in this process uh, when you have a, a very complex wheelchair that that it's it's hard to sort of do it at the gate and make sure you, and hope that you have the right people with the right tools or the right expertise um, there, and so we're working on ways that that you can that when you book a, t a flight not only will you be able to make sure you have the right um flight and plane but that you will be able to upload your information um and and let us know all those nuances all those things and that that information will be able to flow throughout your journey so uh again one thing i one thing i heard very loud and clear when we were in dulles was like 
hey, it's great that when I get there, that there's someone there, but what about when I arrive at my destination? Oftentimes we find that we do a good job at the beginning, but but then no one knows when you arrive there. And so I think making sure we close the loop on that process is really important. And we are working on a set of technologies, uh, you know, in concert with uh, the feedback we're getting from, you know, Josh, from your community and, and, and from a lot of people to make sure that we can continue to make that process better. Thanks, Jason. And speaking of processes, Jason, how do you and your team there at United Airlines survey users in order to strengthen and or improve the travel planning experiences? Yeah, we do a lot of surveys. Um, you know, we give surveys out to a, a, a very large percentage of our of our customers. Hopefully, if you fly more, you know, fly fly regularly, I'm sure you get them too. Um, and we take them very seriously, and we look for feedback, and we use that feedback. Um, we use it every day. Like we're, uh, you know, we have so many processes that go back to what does the survey say? What are our customers telling us? What are we hearing? Um, so I, I guess to, to, to this group and to this community that's listening, please fill them out and please be honest and, and, and know that we're listening and tell us what, what situations that you're seeing and how we can get better. Cause that, that is really, uh, going to make us better. And then obviously there are other ways, you know, we have customer care and other, other, other places where you can also provide via beyond the survey. If you want to call us or send us an email. We look at all of that. We we take it so seriously. So um, I I encourage everyone if if they've got ideas or if they've got concerns or whatever, don't don't be shy. Uh, we love the feedback because you know we don't we only know because you guys help us understand. Great, thank you. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody needs to keep providing their input. Because yep. input is is. If we don't use our voices, if we don't share our stories, they get lost. And so, and and I know there's always room for improvement. So, um, Jason, within the airline industry as a whole, what do you think are the biggest area rooms for improvement? And how do you hope that the entire airline industry as a whole kind of starts to address those? Yeah, look, I, I'll say this. Um, I mean, there's so many opportunities. The one I'm thinking a lot about right now um, is... I'm, I'm, I think as aircraft or as airlines, we, we continue to get better. Specifically, one of the challenges with, with wheelchairs, um, I'll use that one as an example, you know, air, airplanes aren't really designed thinking about how wheelchairs go in them, you know, and, and frankly, I think we can do even wheelchair designs aren't often thought of in terms of how can we, at some point, this thing's going to have to be folded up and put into a, a metal box and flown, you know, thousands of miles. And so I think we're going to have to, and, and certainly as, as an airline, we have to do our part, but I think we need to create a larger coalition of both wheelchair manufacturers, air, aircraft manufacturers and airlines to come up with more holistic solutions so that we don't rely and have to rely on, on just hoping that the people at the, on the ramp, on the airline are in a position to to deal with what is a really complicated piece of equipment um, and make sure that it gets to the right place, uh, you know, unharmed. So that to me is something that I'm thinking about a lot. And, um, you know, hopefully we can start using maybe this community to advocate a little bit uh, to, to, to for that too. Because I think, I think until we get, you know, equipment that's designed and, and aircraft that's designed I think we're always going to really be behind the curve a little bit in, 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 in making air travel as, as uh, seamless as it could be. It means the world to me to hear that come from you, Jason, and your, thank you for your leadership and all that you do. Yeah. Jason, how does United collaborate with other industry leaders around inclusion and accessibility? Well, we have, you know, we have, um, we have lots of ways we do it. Um, we do have partnerships uh, with with certain, or, 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 you know, American Association of People with Disabilities, 
uh, industry groups. Uh, we do a lot in our government affairs and community affairs organizations. So we have we, we certainly are working in, with with our, our friends in Washington on on policies and and procedures as well as well as like the FAA on safety and, and those things. Um, uh, additionally, we're very active in our local communities uh, as well. So we have lots of ways which we we partner um, across the board. And then I think our bridge our bridge organization, our BRG, do, does a lot of outreach as well. So we have lots of different examples of um, of where we we're constantly trying to to be part of the community. We say, and our, our our slogan is "Good leads the way," and and I think we try to live that every day. And 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 that in definitely includes sort of trying to make sure we're in, as inclusive as we can be. That's terrific. Thank you for sharing those examples and your story. Um, tremendous success. Congratulations to you and your team. And thank you, Jason, for joining this episode of Where Are We Now and Spotlight Sessions Collaboration Podcast. Well, well, thank you for having me. It's been a it's been a pleasure and an honor to uh, to speak with you guys today. So, and really enjoyed it. And I uh, again, uh, truly, Jason, thank you so much for your time and all that you do. And for all of our guests, thank you for staying to the end. And please take a moment to check out CLB's Where Are We Now digital series by visiting the CLB YouTube page. You can learn more about Accessme and the Columbia Lighthouse for the Blind by subscribing on YouTube and following us on Instagram. Facebook, and LinkedIn. Find us on our handles at XSB underscore community and at Columbia Lighthouse. We are looking forward to our next episode. And as always, thank you for being on this journey with us. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.